The Dutch colonized Indonesia for over three and a half century. It was the time of exploitation, oppression, and corruption. In March 2020, the Dutch King Willem Alexander visits Indonesia. In August 2020, the 75 year anniversary of Sukarno's independence proclamation will be celebrated. Is it time for a Dutch apology? Should the Netherlands apologize for their colonization of Indonesia? Stay tuned. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. And if you're new and you just stumbled upon this channel, my name is Stefan, I'm a history teacher from the Netherlands and I like to hustle history for you. And if you like it as well, then please consider subscribing. And if you do so, please don't forget to hit that notification bell so you will be notified when a new video comes out. First of all, an apology has a moral side, is it the right thing to do? As well as a diplomatic and financial side when we think of reparation payments. Now in this episode, I'm going to focus on the moral side of things. Is it the right thing to do to apologize? Should the Dutch government apologize for their colonization of Indonesia? The first question we need to ask ourselves then is, well, for what? I mean, the first Dutch colonizers arrived in the Indonesian archipelago around 1600 and the Dutch left after a sovereignty transfer in 1949 or you can also argue 1962 because then West Papua was transferred to the Republic of Indonesia. So we're roughly speaking about 350 years of history. That is a lot but we can narrow it down. See, from 1600 till 1800, the Dutch East India Company, the VOC, ran the things in the East Indies. Then there was an interlude. The VOC went bankrupt, Napoleon started to conquer Europe, and the British invaded Java. And in 1816, the Dutch government of the United Kingdom of the Netherlands officially took over. Therefore, the Dutch East Indies were born. Over the course of the 19th century, the Dutch expanded their rule over the archipelago since by that time, not all islands were under Dutch control yet. In order to gain control, the Dutch waged many bloody colonial wars. Apart from that, the Dutch imported many Chinese contract laborers to work on plantations. Also, many Indonesians were put to work. Can you speak of slavery here? Well, not on such a vast scale like we saw in the Americans that slaves could be bought and sold, but the working conditions were abysmal. These horror stories led to a report, the Remref Report from 1904, which confirmed these abuses. Yet the paper wasn't made public and therefore not much action was undertaken. Only in 1941, the last of these abuses came to an end. This was at the eve of the Japanese invasion. The Japanese completed their conquest of Indonesia and would rule till August 1945. Dutch citizens were put into Japanese internment camps known as Japakampen. A part of them was allowed to live outside the camps known as outside campers or buitenkampers, but the conditions weren't great there either. The Japanese disrupted the food distribution system and as a result of this, famine struck and countless Indonesians died. Not to mention those who were put to work in forced labor projects like the Sumatra and Burma Railway. Many Western POWs worked there as well. Dutch and Indonesian women were sometimes forced to work as comfort women for the Japanese. This was basically forced prostitution. The Japanese also trained many Indonesian youngsters and fed them with anti-Western propaganda. These so-called Pemudas run amok when the Japanese surrendered in August 1945. In the ensuing killing spree known as the Bersia period, countless of Europeans, Indo-Europeans as well as Chinese were slaughtered by the Pemudas. The death toll of the Bersia period runs into the tens of thousands. In the meanwhile, Sukarno had proclaimed the Indonesian independence and the Dutch returned to restore order, which led to the Indonesian War of Independence, also known as the Politionele Axis. War crimes were committed on both sides and at the end of 1949, the Dutch withdrew from the now independent Indonesia. 
Recently, I went to a photo exposition in Rotterdam made by Tom Hofman. The premise was very clear. The Dutch were evil. The Dutch were ignorant. And the Dutch are still ignorant today. Basically, the whole exhibition was a one string of photographs to prove how evil the Dutch were. For this, he carefully concealed other episodes of the history. Episodes that former foreign minister Ben Bott states should also be addressed. Ben Bott is against an apology and he also wants people to shed light on the Bersia period or the war crimes committed by the Indonesian nationalists. Ben Bott stated the following. We Dutch always keep up things from the past that Indonesians would like to put an end to. They like to look ahead. And I also notice in my conversations with previous and current ambassadors that they understand that on one hand. But on the other hand, they find it annoying that things from the past are constantly being brought up again. They also say, because you do that, you more or less force us to look back on that period that we have behind us. Then you always get the same story. We Indonesians are people who look ahead and you Dutch always look back. Now it's very interesting to contemplate why that is. Why do the Indonesians like to look ahead and we Dutch like to look back? Well, perhaps it has something to do with Indonesian or perhaps Asian culture in general. Perhaps it also has to do with the level of wealth. See, the Netherlands is a wealthy country and when you have enough wealth, current matters seem less urgent and you basically have the luxury of looking back. And that's then what you do. You look back. And I think this is a very good thing. It is very healthy for a society to take a critical stance towards its own past to look at the bright side but definitely also look at the dark pages of history but when it comes down to only and solely focus on your own dark sides of history and there's no more room for any nuance or anything else I personally think it comes down to what I can call self-harassment. And I don't think that is a healthy way of thinking. And that is also what I saw at the exhibition I just mentioned. Take for example this photograph. It's at the end of the exhibition and it basically shows an Indonesian nationalist that is captured by the Dutch and being severely mistreated. Now don't get me wrong. I do not want to whitewash these events. What happened there is horrible. What the Dutch did was horrible. Yet, this photograph is being displayed without any proper backstory. It just put there, see, the Dutch are evil. But then, what is the story behind this photograph? Can we give an explanation for the horrible acts the Dutch committed towards Indonesian POWs. Well, let's give it a try. When the Japanese took over, the former fighters of the Royal Netherlands East Indies Army, the KNIL, were interned in Japanese prison camps and many of them had to work for the Japanese. The circumstances were abysmal and when the war was over these men were psychologically and physically exhausted now what the dutch government did was that these men were recruited to fight in the indonesian war of independence against the indonesian nationalists so think of this you are severely traumatized on top of that, you're also fed up by the horror stories of the Bersia period when the Indonesian youngsters, the Pemudas, slaughtered many of your fellow Europeans. Perhaps your family members have been slaughtered by the Pemudas. 
and now you are being sent into the field with a gun. What do you think is gonna happen? These people go berserk. These people will go totally out of line and will resort to savagery. Yes, I give it that. It was a big mistake of the Dutch government to recruit these poor men in the first place. It is horrible. It is bad. Yet, it can be explained. However, if you don't explain it and you just put a photograph there, the viewers might think, well, Dutch were savages. See, when providing context, you must not and will not approve of these abuses. It will give you an understanding of why it happened. Historian Remy Limpach, who wrote an extensive book about the Dutch violence, 1945-1949 states that basically most Dutch soldiers did not commit any crimes as such. Now as a result of this book, the Dutch government started an investigation about both the Dutch and the Indonesian violence during the Indonesian War of Independence and the results will be presented in 20. 21. So until that time, we will have to wait, but I'm sure these results won't be pretty. And then what? Will it be time then for an apology? Well, let me ask you a question. Are the Indonesians waiting for us to apologize? Well, according to Ben Bot, they are not. And when I traveled in Indonesia 2016 and I spoke to Indonesians, I encountered a similar attitude, yet I cannot speak for the millions and millions Indonesians that live in this beautiful country. Regarding some comments on my previous videos about Indonesian history, I sure believe there are some Indonesians who hold a grudge towards the Dutch, which is understandable and which I respect to a certain extent. Now if you are Indonesian, I would love to hear you toss about it, so please go all out in the comments. Why only focus on the Dutch crimes and ignore the other atrocities that happened that in a way influenced these abuses? Let me be clear, I do not want to whitewash the Dutch past. Horrible things happened. I'm far from a colonial revisionist. I only want to say that in order to get a good picture of the situation, you need to look at all aspects of history. And I think that is a better approach than the continuous self harassment I see in Dutch media today. I wonder what you think of this. Dutch people, but also non Dutch people. Perhaps your country has a history of colonization as well. Thanks to my patrons you see on screen and a special thanks to Henry Clarkson, Cooling Castleman, the President, Michael Nosek and Wombat Cookie. If you want to support me, go to the link right here. Now if you want to know more about early Dutch history, you want to know more about the 80 years war, the Dutch revolt, you click right here. If you want to know more about the Dutch slave trade, it wasn't pretty, click right here. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye for now.